Welcome back everybody to day two of the duo minnow tournament. Now, you may be surprised to see the return of the ones who who got knocked out of the semifinals. They will be fighting a brand new team for another shot at glory. Right, so we can take a look back at the bracket here. So the set now is Squash Bombers versus Victory Dot Floor. And they will be fighting in this set. Victory.floor, very familiar faces here. Put up a valiant effort against Solar Starfish in the semifinals. And and uh, knocked out MPO from the set 2. They are now back for another chance at the win. So... Again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Faller, or as many people know me as not Faller, and I will be your host for today. Again, I do not have my co-host. Right. We're going to get started here as soon as I set up the room. We're just waiting here. It might take a minute.
Okay, we will be starting the first game shortly. Okay, we're going to get into the first game of set oh, number three here. It's Squash Bombers versus Victory.Floor. The score is currently 0-0. Zero to zero. And we're seeing some very interesting compositions. Again, Victory.Floor is sticking with the exact same composition as before. And we're just going to get started here. Oh, amazing pick by the Zap here. We're going to see... The tower is now being pushed up. Some very strong picks we're seeing here from Victory.Floor. I'd say they're definitely known for this. And there comes the cooler coming out. It's on the tower. It will last a shorter amount of time because of this. Right, anyways, I am still setting up this. That's a very unfortunate kill. Shinobi over here had the attack the cooler, which means he will be back right now, and here he is. We're going to see a crab come out to defend the tower and manage to get one kill before our Zap here gets another. That Carbon does miss his pick. He does not get a kill, which means his team will not be able... Oh, that is a very unfortunate tactical. But yeah, like I was saying, that Carbon missing the pick there was detrimental for squ the Squash Bombers here. And we're going to reach checkpoint 2 before seeing Squash Bombers go 3 down. And our duelies here are setting up for a crab tank so that they can continue their push. Trying to get up that wall there. The, ta the tactic cooler is on the tower once again. It's going to be destroyed very fast. And here comes the crab to finish the push. Only 8 ticks remaining. But victory.floor goes 3 down and they do not have a tactic cooler. Shinobi giving jumps. And he's, he has cooler. Not ready, but on him. And now we're going to see Squash Bombers pushing up the tower. But he's going to go down to the blaster over there. Carbon Roller does manage to find the pick on the gal there before he can jump out. Victory.Floor is now two down. And here is Squash Bombers chance to make a push. That could have been a very important pick for Victory.Floor, possibly securing them the game. There goes the Carbon Roller. There goes... The, no. Okay, I don't know what just happened to my internet connection, but the game is over. I missed everything. I was trying to fix the stream. What just happened? So we all just straight up missed the whole game. I have no idea what just happened. Right, anyways. Um... Wow, okay.
So, if I can get an explanation as to what just happened, um, that would be, that would be very nice. I, I, like, that, my internet literally just went out. It just straight up said no internet. What is wrong with my, my PC's connection? Wow. Right. So, um, now that that's fixed, we can get into the next game here. Again, if you would like to use your surprise, now is the time to tell me. Though, it is Clam Blitz on Museum Del Foncino. This is one of my least favorite stages. Like, in, in general, and also just on this mode. Yeah, anyways, that is going to put victory.floor 1-0. On the in the set, so I'm going to move on here. If the squash bombers would like to use their surprise, you tell me now. The victory.floor player we were missing has just arrived. So, now the, the set will be able to progress as normal. Right. So it does not look like we will be seeing a surprise, so we are going to move on into the game here. Right. It seems we there are two separate crimsons in the chat. I could not begin to tell you what this means. Right, and the game is beginning here, so... Oof. Oh, the chat died. That's very unfortunate. I will fix that in a second. Right. We are going to get into game two here. The score is currently 1-0 in victory.floor's favor. And we're going to get right into it. It is Museum Dalfontino Clam Blitz. And I am in the process of changing the colors. We are going to see the tri Slosher Nouveau go down here, which means they will not be getting a Tactic Cooler for a bit longer. That is a very nice trade, I must say. This, it is currently equal for the teams. Never mind, Squash Bombers are three down. We're going to see missiles come out to, to start the push here. I have no clue how you live that Splat Bomb, but they're just going to go in and they're going to get the score. Ah, uh, what a flick from the blaster! Oh my god! And they're just gonna absolutely shred all those points, and on they're only at 38 remaining already, and we're only 50 seconds into the game, and they just keep scoring! Squash Bombers, regardless of being pushed, they go two down, Catfay getting an excellent pick with the Flingsa Roller, and it's absolutely detrimental here for the Squash Bombers, they, they will manage to get one pick, but will they be able to save the game from ending? And they will be t able to. Now, it is going to be very hard for the Squash Bombers to come back from that massive push here. 
Victory dot floor, however, does go two down. They cannot lose their cooler player. Great booyah bomb there from, from the Forge Pro. The tri Slasher not able to get a pick, but at least he got his cooler down. And the Zap does manage to get another pick. He requires one more clam, and they get to score once again. And th that Ultra Stamp is going to find a pick on the Victory Dot Floor player before going down. Those strikes not finding any picks. The Booyah Bomb is going to kill the end zap there, and they are out of clams. The Wiper is trying to flank here, to maybe try and get their point, to maybe try and get points on the board, but they failed to because they went in without their team. It's a very common mistake. And Squash Bombers are going to go three down here. That is their last player he needs to jump out so that he can live and keep his special. But no, he goes down instead. And now the Squash Bombers are two players down with one flanking. And Victory.Floor does not see them until they build the, the Power Clam. And they're going to try and win the, that fight. But they could not make it to the basket. Very unfortunate for the Squash Bombers here. And we're going to see another flank attempt, but the flings that predicted it this time, and they're now sharking, waiting for someone to do it again. That ultra stamp not able to find any kills. Never mind, they found one. Victory Dot Floor is going to score anyway, though, because they were not paying attention to their basket. The tri slash is going to find a pick here. Let's go check on him. See how close he is to the cooler. He is very close to the tactical cooler here. He needs to get that out for his team. Victory.Floor and the Squash Bombers are both two down. However, Victory.Floor's end zap player did have a cooler. The Wiper not able to find a pick here so that his team can push in. Those strikes are going to paint in front of their plat, but they will not be able to push. They now have two power clamps and they need to find a way in. Unfortunate, unfortunate that player had to go down. They are now coordinating their specials very well here. With that Ultra Stamp put, ugh, with the Ultra Stamp capitalizing off that Booyah Bomb. This ball is not going to get Zuka yo. Hopefully he can get the counter pick and he does not. There is a stealth jump over there. Oh my god! That end zap that was sorry, that was an order shot. The order shot just wiped out the entire Squash Bombers team. And unfortunately, the Squash Bombers do not have a ball. So that will be the game. Very strong push from Victory.Floor at the start there. Right, again. If you would like to use your surprise, now is the time to tell me. Right, and speak of the devil, we are going to see a little surprise come out here. Let's see what has been chosen here. Right. So, according to the form, you guys wanted to see Victory dot floor. Wait, hold on. Wanted to see victory dot floor. They cannot do the objective for the first one minute of the game. After four, after the clock hits four minutes, you are allowed to do the objective. 
and it is Rainmaker, so this means that they cannot pick up the Rainmaker and push it. You can do anything except pick up the Rainmaker. So it is Rainmaker on Mahi Mahi Resort to be very specific. And we're going to see how this goes. It's a very small stage. If the Squash Bombers get a push here, it might be very detrimental for Victory.Floor because they cannot pick up the Rainmaker. I accidentally turned on my mic input. Need you need to hear all my yelling. Now we're just waiting for the game to begin here and I will begin the commentary. Guys, please, enough with the pregnancy. That sounds really weird out of context. Alright, the game is beginning here. It is Rainmaker on Mahi Mahi Resort. This could be very bad for Victory.Floor because of how small the stage is. But we're going to get into the game here. And the game is beginning. <clears throat> Squash Bombers have taken the choice to have a longer ranged weapon on their arsenal. Flings are almost going down to the bomb. And Squash Bombers are going to pick up the Rainmaker here and they're retreating with it. Again, the, the Victory.Floor is not allowed to pick up the Rainmaker here. So Flings that does need to watch out for the pop manages to get one pick with the Tenta Missiles. And they need to push here rather than retreating. And I have no clue how this end zap is still a lot. That's an order shot. Wh oh. Very, very brutal. Uh, very, very brutal game for uh, the Squash Bombers here. Um, we are going to see a Splatoon moment. Uh... Uh, fun stuff. Right. And now the score is 0 2 to 1. The internet now has one point. Internet is a very strong team once again.
I have not uh, ever seen a stronger team than the internet. Here is me noticing I also have the date wrong. We're just waiting on our competitors to rejoin here and then we will get started. And there we go. Right. <clears throat> so again, Rayan Maker on Mahi Mahi Resort. We are going to see how it plays out this time. It is the same debuff. Oh, Lord. Oh, come on. What is, what is happening? I'm afraid there's going to be a bit more waiting. The room has just closed for no reason. Oh my god, bro. What is this, bro? What is this? <sighs> so that is going to add another point onto the internet. Oh my lord. It, the score is now 1 2 2. We are seeing some very interesting matches here, eh? <clears throat> it's 
So, what do you guys like to do for fun? Still waiting on a few. I hope it will not continue like this. I have no idea what's happening. Very cool, Cal C Car Carolyn Arendt. I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> I have updated the bracket here. You can look at that. Uh, Salmon Run is, uh, I used to play a lot of it. It's not really my thing, though. Alright, finally. Right, we can begin now. Rainmaker on Mahi Mahi Resort. <clears throat> Don't break. Okay, we're fine for now. Okay, may I remind you of the surprise? Um, Victory.floor is not allowed to play the objective for the first minute of the game. Right, we're getting into game three again. Let's hope we will not see any disconnects today. I think today is a very bad day for internet. First the stream and now this. But anyways, who cares about the internet because the match is starting. <clears throat> Again, we're seeing the same team composition from victory.floor. If they do make it to the finals, I hope Solar Starfish will be scouting this and they'll know what to do. And my advice for victory.floor is to maybe change around your team composition so it is not very uh, predictable. Right. Again, victory.floor has to wait until the 4 minute mark to pick up the Rainmaker, so that's what we're seeing. Competitive Splatoon tournament, this would look very weird. They have the push completely set up, and it is now behind the point line. I would not pick up that Rainmaker completely painted under. We're probably going to see the Rainmaker get picked off here unless this Blaster can defend it. And the Rainmaker is going to get several points before going down, making it to the check. Ooh. That Reflux went into the bomb. Very unfortunate. We're going to see a trade here, except the Blaster picked off their tri slasher player, so that means there is no more cooler. And where on earth is the Rainmaker? He is in fr be behind the checkpoint, not getting any points. And once again, we are seeing the slideshow on the stream. What is happening? The thing is, unfortunately, I cannot watch it with stream delay. Keeping my software open is not seeming uh, to be very well. They are going to miss the checkpoint here. We're not going to see a pick yet, just yet. They really need to pick off that blaster. There is the Tacticooler for Squash Bombers. And I'm unaware of the situation with victory.floor. Let's go check on their cooler player over here. He's very close to cooler. He managed to get a pick on the Rainmaker. 
and he's going to get the cooler very soon while the Squash Bombers are three players down. There it is coming out now, and they are going for the checkpoint, and they get it. The water level is now dropping. It will change the terrain of the map drastically, and we are going to see the crab trying to contest the pop, but is unable. Never mind. The crab just able to contest the pop. The pop getting two kills. Absolutely crazy stuff here. The duelies are trying to contest the pop from down there. And they are not able to. And they have to fall back. But they got blown up. Very unfortunate. And now the Squash Bombers have to make a push. The Squash Bombers are now on the board. Well, they were already. But they made it very close to the checkpoint before going down. They're going to get a cooler out. But they need to get that pick on the zap before he can go grab the cooler. He will not be able to contest the pop here. Most likely. Without his teammates. And here they come now. This, blast, this blaster is having a very fun time fighting that Tri-Stringer because of uh, the way that weapon works. The tri is going to find a pick on the blaster after they get the bubble out. Not able to find any more picks, the, but although Victory.Floor is two players down. Including their zap, which means the cooler will be coming out a bit later. We're going to see a whale here trying to push out back the players. However, this Rainmaker really needs support. I have no clue where he's going. And the blaster does manage to get him there. The Rainmaker did not have anyone to support him. Very unfortunate. And they're going to pick it up and they're going to use the stall strats. Never mind, they're pushing it. Nope, they're in mid. And that will most likely be the game. Victory.floor is now 3 0, and they only need one more game to win the set. Right, so, if you want to use your surprise, now is the time to tell me. And we will be seeing a surprise come out here. Now, let's see what has been chosen. We are going into game four. And, oh! Oh, very... Very unfortunate for victory.floor here. Victory.floor can only, or sorry, victory.floor must 3v4 the Squash Bombers. Right, so the map and mode is Splat Zones on Umami Ruins. This is going to be a very tough game for victory.floor, especially on this map. Now there is an issue here, I can only have two spectators, which means one of the victory.floor players will have to leave.
All right, and here we go. Right, so it is a 3v4. Right, the game is beginning here. Once again, it is a 3v4 for the, um, uh, what the, the for Victor that floor. They only have three players on their team. So we're going to see how this plays out. There they are now. Right, getting into the game here. Once again, this is a very tough map mode for this debuff. We're going to see how this go plays out here. Victory dot floor already getting the zone, but they are one down, so they only have two players remaining on their team. And now they are two down. The last player only, the Flingza. The rest are respawning. Because of this, they will be able to take back the lead. And the zone timer is just just keeps going down. And there's the two players going down once again. They're going to be 10 to missiles. However, the tactical cooler will protect them from the missiles if they die. We're seeing the end zap pushing up the left side here, taking up their zone. Although it is taken back and now here comes the Zuka to get one kill before the zap and the order shot go down. Or that's just the splatter shot now. Right, and... Victory dot floor is struggling to take back the zone. However, they did get a tactic cooler out. Victory dot floor has to play this very safe and get their specials from afar. The carbon roller on squash bombers has gone down, presumably to presumably the missiles. There's a tactic cooler ready. Squash bombers are now two down, and they have the enemy team zone. They have both zones, and now they are counting down. The carbon roller is on the left zone here. And they are going to go down, unfortunately. Victory Dot Floor's timer is still going down. How will the Squash Bombers manage this? They need to take back the map. Here comes the splashdown to get the wipeout. Oh my god, and now they can reclaim the zone before this victory dot floor managed to take the lead. The Zuka is going to come out here. Not able to find a pick. They're now pushing up. In a very coordinated manner, Squash Bombers are going to pop a vacuum. And they have the tactical cooler, although the Zap is flanking. That is an order shot. The order shot does manage to get a trade, but trading in this scenario is not good. Victory that floor does manage to get back to zone, and now they're now chopping away at the penalty while the squash bombers are two players down. The splashdown is coming out here, not able to find a pick, unfortunately. We are going to see both zones being reclaimed. The VAC was sent out at an attempt to get one of the zones back. There is that player is down. There is no more tactic cooler for victory dot floor for the time being. And Squash Bombers managed to take back the zone. Victory dot floor does manage to get missiles on three. Does not manage to get the pick on the tri slasher, although trades with his teammate. But the Squash Bombers timer is still going down while they have the mana advantage.
Those dualies are going to go down. I could not explain how. I did not see the final shot being hit there. Very strange, to say the least. Uh, right, so only one minute on the clock left. Victor.Floor is about to finish their penalty. They managed to get a Tacticooler out before uh, Squash Bombers can get back into mid. Gets a pick on the Carbon. Another on the Tri Slasher. There's no more cooler. This Squash Bombers are now two down. Here comes the Splashdown. It's not able to cap the zone. But now v Squash Bombers finds a pick on a Victor.Floor player to take back the zone. And now they're trying to get the other one. Will they be able to initiate the penalty on Victor.Floor? We're about to see. But no, they cannot. Victor.Floor takes back the zone. The Tri Slasher trying their best to get the zone back. They managed to find a pick before before dying. And there is the lead from Victor.Floor. The Carbon Roller going down here. Only 10 seconds remaining for Swash Bombers to make a comeback. They managed to take the zones or not. They can, they're unable to take the zones. And that is the game. Victory.Floor will take the set. Very well fought from Victory.Floor. And the Squash Bombers, unfortunately, the penalty was not enough for the Squash Bombers to take the win. Right, so we can take a look here back at the bracket in a minute. Victory.Floor is one step closer to facing their, their rivals in the finals once again. Victory.Floor has now made it to the semifinals and they will be fighting the Starfishers or Krabby Patties after the next set takes place. Good game everyone. You guys fought well. Right and now we will be back after this quick intermission.
Welcome back everyone. I'm just going to set the stage. We are preparing. Oh my god, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> right. The next set will be starting shortly or at the next hour. We are going to see in a moment. Just hang tight. Right, once again, there will be an intermission. I am currently arranging the set.
very unfortunate thing here. We are missing a player. We may or may not need a substitute. Not looking very good for the other team here. We're gonna try to. Okay, we are going to begin the next set. Unless, unless uh, we cannot find a substitute because one of their players has not shown up. So we will most likely need a substitute here. If you have a sub, please let me know. Again, apologies for the wait time. We are waiting for them to join the room. They are not disqualified. It's fine. Allow me to fix the bracket. We have a brand new team icon.
if you're just joining in, we will be starting the game very shortly. We are just waiting on a few players. My, my, you guys are taking a while. All right, we're getting intermission again. Oh my. At this point now, the entire team of the Starfishers has joined the room. 
we are currently waiting on two other players from the Krabby Patties. Recap of the rules, give me a second and I will pull them up. Right, so to recap the rules, you will play a randomly selected game mode and map each game. Each set will be a best out of seven, which means the first team to win four games will win the set. And in the incident of a disconnect, replays are permitted. Each team can only have three replays per set, and if the disconnect was intentional, there will not be a replay. And lastly, if the game is past the halfway point, there will not be a replay. And here's some things to note. The what? Here's some things to note. You don't need a team to join. It's recommended. Additionally, if you apply without a full team, you will be assigned one, and there is no maximum skill level. It's very heated in the set room right now. I have no idea what's happening. We are still waiting on our final two players of the, the Krabby Patties. Oh, you wanted to know about the gimmick. Oh. So the gimmick is the little surprise. Um, this is the way it works. So, only if a team is losing, they can decide to use little, little, their little surprise in between games. You only get three surprises per set. All the surprises are uh, predetermined, and all the surprises are debuffs. Uh, one more thing. If the losing team chooses to use their little surprise, it will be determined. No, no, that's not, no, that's not a thing anymore. Sorry. That, those are the rules for the little surprise. Okay, we are currently waiting on one last player and then we can begin the first game. Unfortunately, Arcade, you are not allowed to know little surprises before they happen. And yes, they are all debuffs. I mean, if I told you, then it wouldn't be a surprise, am I right? I'm so funny.
Wait, hold on. There is something I must do. I cannot have this without music. One second. Why can't I? Okay, that's annoying. There we go. The bottom right team are the starfishers, and the one right above are the Krabby Patties. Indeed, we could have Solar Starfish versus the Starfishers. Okay, this is taking too long, so at 25, if the last player of the Krabby Patties fails to show up, the point will go to the Starfishers and they will move on to the semifinals. There he is, finally they have shown up. Alright, we are going to begin the first game. It is Splat Zones on Flounder Heights. We are waiting on two, three more players to get ready and we will begin the first game. So hang tight. All right, here we go. The game is beginning at last. 
We are in the fourth set. This will decide who is going to the semifinals, and the semifinals will decide who is going to face Solar Starfish in the finals to win the tournament. The start, the score is currently zero to zero, and we are going. To <laughs> we are going to begin the set. The set. Oh my. Uh, so parted my cough. Oh. We are already seeing two players on the Krabby Patties go down. Three players now. The Starfishers are at work here. The Blaster on the Starfishers is going to go down. And the Tri-Stringer in exchange for the Flingser Roller who is now respawning. And, and the Explosher. Never mind, the Starfishers are three down. The Strikes are coming in here to keep the zone. But it fails the cap. Very unfortunate. The Krabby Patty's trying to take the zone on their own there, not looking very good. There's two picks already. Starfishers are two down as well as the Krabby Patty's. But the, the Starfishers are in the lead here. Now with only 35 ticks remaining, the Krabby Patties have to act fast because in splat zones, if you do not act fast and the, you let the timer go down for too long, it can become very bad. The Krabby Patties managed to retake their zone here, but are unable to push up and go two down. We're going to see a valiant attempt from the Krabby Patties managing to put a penalty on the Starfishers from that ultra stamp there, managing to cap the zone. Thank you for notifying me of this typo. I will fix that now. But on an unrelated note, we can now focus on the game. The Starfishers are now chopping down at their penalty here so they can start getting points. We're going to see this blaster jump back to their spawn and jump back already once again. Trying to get here, very nice kill from that Splatana. Splatana is very devastating on Flounder Heights. The, the Starfishers have now abolished their penalty. They only have 16 ticks remaining to win the game and they're just currently stalling but it's very unfortunate they do not see the ink brush flanking, but he goes down anyway. They managed to cap the zones. They're now ticking down. And they hold it. They hold it, but the order shot kick gets reclaims their own zone. Another flank goes down. And the Krabby Patties are now three down. And the Starfishers are going to proceed to take the zone back here. Oh, never mind! The ink brush gets two kills! before going down and he's now allowing his team to go in massive respect to the crazy ink brush right once again the starfishers are taking out their penalty Completely unable to re-enter the map. The Krabby Patties here. The Ink Rush once again trying to find picks. The Flingza does unfortunately go down, but he gets a trade. The Krabby Patties are two down. The Starfishers are also two down, though. This is a very back and forth game we see here. That Crab Tank is very devastating. Ink Rush trying to paint the walls so he can get up. Maybe find a pick, but he goes down instead. Heavily unfortunate. Oh, and that is the end of the game. The point will go to the Starfishers by knockout. Very back and forth game there. Krabby Patties did ha do a very good job on keeping the penalty. 
Unfortunate for the Krabby Patties though. We're going to move on to the next game. It is Rainmaker on Inkblot Art Academy. And again, if you, to the Krabby Patties, if you would like to use your surprise, you have to tell me now. Okay, we will not be seeing a surprise come out this game, so we're going to get straight into the match here. We are just waiting for our competitors to get ready, and then we will start the match. Ugh. Taking your time, eh? Yeesh. All right, the match is beginning here. I've ju I just realized I forgot to change. There we go. Right. Anyways, the match is beginning here. It is Rainmaker on Inkblot Art Academy. And allow me to change the colors once again. Never mind, they're the same. Here we go. Well, almost, but still. Right, the game is beginning. The Starfishers are going to get pop here, taking down one player on the Krabby Patties. Although the Krabby Patties are going to pick it up, getting an early lead. They've already lost that early lead though, very unfortunate. Here comes the Kraken. They're going to use that Kraken to protect the Rainmaker and push up. And the Rainmaker is just going for it. He does unfortunately go down. However, the, the Blob Lover on the Starfishers is giving several jumps, which they will use to push very soon. Although the Rainmaker flank somehow managed to get the checkpoint and defend themselves. The Starfishers are now three down, and now they have an opportunity to push. What is happening? What is happening? The Rainmaker is going for it. It does not manage to take the lead. Very unfortunate. If he took one more step, he would have taken the lead. The very good push from the Krabby Patties, though. That could have been very strong. 
We are going to see the strike come out here. Bit of lag on my end. The flings that goes down. The Krabby Patties are three down, giving the Starfishers an opportunity to come back. The Stamp is coming out here. Does manage to, does manage to find a pick. And now the Rainmaker is pushing up, and it's just a matter of time. Here comes the Wipeout. And the Rainmaker is going to win the game. And the point goes to the Starfishers. Very intense game. The Krabby Patties had a very strong opportunity to push there. Unfortunately, they were not able to. And we are going to move on to the next game. Unless there is a surprise coming out. Anyways, the next game will be Tower Control on uh, Robo Ramen. Very, very nice mode and map. Or, or it's a very nice mode for this map. But the map is good in general. I'm usually not a tower control person, but I I just don't I I don't know. I love this map mode. All right, the Krabby Patties have chosen to not take out their surprise just yet. So we are going to begin the game. Okay, and the game is beginning. Oh, oh. man. Hmm. Should have got more sleep. Right. It's tower control on Robo Ramen. We're going to begin the game here. Double cooler. Very interesting. From the Krabby Patties here. Using double cooler is not always the best, but. We're going to see how this plays out now. The flings are already going down, not looking very good. They're already three down, only for one kill on the Starfishers. That is the wipeout, and now the tower is being pushed. They are making it past checkpoint one. The cooler is coming out on the tower. And here are the chumps. 
They've made it to checkpoint two. The Krabby Patties are still not able to get out. This Zap is able to get a pick on the, the, the paintbrush. I would not push on my own. They're already at checkpoint three, ready to take the game. And it's already over. What just happened? Right, and now, my friends, we are going to see a surprise come out for the Starfishers to enforce. Let's see what you have chosen. Oh, it looks like the Starfishers are only permitted to use a weapon from the Charger class. Alright, and let's see what Let's see what the map mode is. Reminder if you force to in if you fail to enforce the challenge slash debuff or surprise, then the point goes to the losing team and you get another surprise and they stack. Not very good. It is clam blitz on Museum Dalfonsino. Right, so my dear, so my dear starfishers, make sure you are picking a weapon from the charger class. Right, a reminder: if the starfishers win this game, they will be moving on to face Victory Dot Floor in the semifinals, and then the winner of the semifinals will be facing Solar Starfish in the finals for the tournament win. We are most likely going to see a pencil come out. If you want to win in this meta, you need a tactic cooler. And if you can only use a weapon from the charger class, pencil is the choice. It is the cur is currently the best cooler option in the entire meta. So. Very intrigued to see what composition the Starfishers are going to pick here. And we're going to see the game starting right now. It is Clam Blitz on Museum Dalfonsino. The score is currently 3-0. and oh, And the Starfishers can only use a weapon from the Charger class. Let's see what they picked. Pencil, double, double squiffer, splat charger. Very smart. <clears throat> right. The game is beginning here. Again, a brief second for me to change the colors. Ow. 
Ouch, that's gotta hurt. The Krabby Patties have already managed to score on the Starfishers. My money is on the Krabby Patties here. I think they've chosen some very strong options to fight their completely charger comp. The junior maps massive flank from the junior here. What is what is even happening? Unable to chase. We need to see a jump here from the Krabby Patties ball, or he will not be able to make it. The Inkrex are coming out. Misses the basket. Very unfortunate. Inkbrush is going to go down here, and that vac is absolutely detrimental. The Krabby Patties keep the lead for now. However, they are two down. Need to watch out for that vacuum shot. Still unable to score. Did not get close enough to the basket. Are we going to see a score here from the, the Starfishers? Let's check, take a look at their ball. See what they're up to. Other than throwing coolers. And I was right about pencil. And the ink brush absolutely going for it once again. You need very precise aim to get the ink brush here. And it looks like this Squiffer player has it, although he does go down. Very unfortunate. The strikes are coming out to push back their charges. One is going to go down from the strikes. And here comes the junior, unable to score once again. He does get sniped, but his killer also goes down. The Krabby Patties do not have a ball here. They need to build one so they can make a push. Everything is set up in their favor here. Very unfortunate. The flings that had to go in front of that wall. The ink brush is coming here. Making himself very hard to aim but still gets sniped. And those, those ink strikes are just going to wipe out the entire Starfishers team. And we're going to see them scoring here. The pencil is going to go down. The squip, one of the squiffers goes down as well. Specifically the vanilla squiffer, they've also chosen to get a new squiffer, one of the very new weapons, very hard to use. Crisco unfortunately going in did not work for him. The flings are also going down because he got he jumped in. The Krabby Patties are now at 25 points remaining. Unable to pick off this ink brush, and he manages to get a no, never mind! He did not get a kill before going down. However, the Starfishers are two down. This guy is getting vacked. Unable to pick him off with the vac though. And they're just having a charger fight right now. But the, the charger goes down to the Flingza. Still unable to find this chick, the, uh, pick, this splatter swoop. One of the Krabby Patties players is going down. The Inkbrush is rushing in and manages to score. That is the Inkbrush playstyle in Clam Blitz. He looks like he knows what he's doing. They're going to score, get rid of their penalty, and get one more score before wiping out the Krabby Patties. There's now only a minute left on the clock for the Starfish to make their comeback here. Inkbrush getting, finding two kills on the Starfishers. The Ink Brush is unable to do his flank this time. The Starfishers, no. Squiffer looking for a pick here. He finds a collateral. The cooler comes out. And now they need a ball. Unfortunately, the Squiffer gets sniped. That Vac not able to find a kill. Does not get to paint for the Starfishers either. The strikes are coming out to defend. They have a ball and he's coming from the other side but cannot make it unfortunately. We're going to go to overtime because there is still a ball on the map. However, the Starfishers are two down. It's looking very slim for them. And that is the game. The point will go to the Krabby Patties. Very intense game there. 
amazingly played by the Krabby Patties there. The ink brush was absolutely devastating for the Starfishers. And we are going to move on to the next game. Once again, you can change your, chain your surprises. So if you would like to use another one, you tell me now. We are on Splat Zones on Mahi Mahi Resort. Right, and it does not look like we will be seeing a su another surprise coming from the Krabby Patties. So, we are going to move on to Game 5. Wait. Yeah, it's Game 5, right? No, I'm pretty sure it's Game 5. Right. Waiting for the game to begin here. <clears throat> Reminder, if the Starfishers win this game, they move on to the fight victory.floor in the semifinals to move on to the finals. And that will be an interesting one. Alright, the game is beginning here. It is Splat Zones on Mahi Mahi Resort. We are going to see how this goes here. There is no debuff inflicted on the Starfishers for this game. It is just a regular 4v4. Once again, allow me... Uh, uh, okay. 
interesting interesting choice of um wow interesting composition from the starfishers here um they do not have a cooler or sustainable paint for that carbon roller user so Krabby Patty is taking an early lead here furry ball going down to the tent umbrella shield Starfishers are taking back the zone here. And they do manage to take the lead and get two kills on the Krabby Patties before going three down as well. And we are waiting for the Krabby Patties to come back here. They managed to get one kill, but the, the Blaster gets a lag shot on the, the, Krabby, the, on the Krabby Patties player. Very unfortunate. Krabby Patties are going to go two down from that. It would have been very helpful to have a cooler on in this situation. Unfortunately though, the Krabby, Pat uh, the Krabby Patties decided to not put one on their comp, but neither did the Starfishers. That Wave Breaker is very selfish. His entire team is not present to fight with the Wave Breaker. And they are going to find one pick before going down. However, the Krabby Patties are two down. That stamp does not manage to come out. And that charger is most likely going to go down, but oh, the, the, the Krabby Patties managed to take back the zone with only 7 ticks remaining, inflicting a penalty of 71 on the Starfishers. Insane stuff we have going on here. Well, that was a great pick from the Krabby Patties player. They are coming back. Those ink mines are coming in very handy to fight that Carbon Roller, and he does manage to get an assist with them. That they need to get the pick on the Tentabrel, but unfortunately they go two down, and now they are three down, and the Starfishers are going to reclaim the zone here. Chopping away at that penalty, the Inkbrush is trying to cause a distraction. In a very active position. Unfortunately, they are not able to get back into the map. The Carbon Roller is looking for a pick on the Ink Brush as it flanks. The Carbon Roller tr can't find a pick on that Charger just yet. Starfish has managed to regain control. The Charger goes down and they keep the zone. Only 15 picks on the penalty remaining and then they will start counting down their 7. Will the Krabby Baddies be able to come back in the nick of time? And it looks like they will not be able to, and that is the game. The Starfishers will be moving on to fight Victory Dot Floor in the semifinals. Very well fought by the Krabby Patties there. They put up a very valiant effort. What? Okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. Anyways. Um. The Starfishers are moving on to the semifinals. Yeah. Uh. Sorry about that. Uh, whatever. Right. The uh, congratulations to the Starfisher. They will be fighting Victory Dot Floor in the semifinals to get a spot in the finals here. Right, and the semifinals will be taking place a bit later here. Will be taking place at 5 p.m. So you can tune in then. But for now, we will be taking a break. And the semis will be at 5 p.m. That's in an hour, Arcade. Right. Anyways, that is going to be it for this stream. Tune back in in an hour to witness the semifinals. And we will be seeing who is going to fight Solar Starfish in the finals. Will it be victory dot floor? Will they be will they be able to have a second chance at the, the winning spot? Or 
will victory.floor go down in the semifinals and then, Sol then the starfishers will fight solar starfish we will see but we are going to take a break here thank you everybody for tuning in and i'll see you in an hour